What's up everybody, Michael Silva here. What a whacking wild day on Wall Street. Guess what, we have a lot more earnings coming out tomorrow and we're gonna talk about those expected moves and we're gonna be talking about what is to be expected to see the index products tomorrow as well. Been a lot of volatile moments in this week's trading session. On top of all of that, we're also gonna dive into the dollar and correlations between various assets to be aware of. We're going to hop right into it today, looking at the 11 sectors first and foremost. Technology led the way. Apple was up around 2% on the day. The big mover, consumer staples, and utilities was up there in the top three too. So a little bit of defensive posturing, but if it wasn't for Apple, tech would obviously be a little bit lower. What took place as far as the indexes go? Well, I mean, pretty much not much going on, right? So relatively flat for the most part. We gapped down lower, a lot of fear, but we started ripping back up to those upper expected or lower expected moves for the week. We're going to be diving into those later. We're going to first start off on earnings. What took place with earnings? Well, JPM, new 52-week low, big hit to the downside on volume. And guess where we tagged? We towered that tagged that expected move for the earnings session. Morgan Stanley almost tagged the lower edge of the expected move and started bouncing from that point. Not all that good looking for the financials. So tomorrow we have BlackRock reporting and it's pricing in roughly a $20 expected move. So you can screenshot this if you want to map it out. So $20 and you would just go plus or minus on the last price right here. Okay, and that's what it would look like. And if we zoom in, you can see it a little bit better. Unfortunately, it cuts off the bottom, but you can see that the financials just do not look healthy at all, right? I mean, I'm sure that we can bounce at some point, but geez, we're just, you know, it's a high, lower high, a lower high, a lower high. And it's just literally, you can just see this bouncy ball movement heading down, just the, the bears applying pressure to what the bulls have left right here as we're kind of floating around those 52 week lows. Um, we have Bank of New York also reporting. You can see a new 52-week low here. Um, it's plus or minus a 1.49 uh, dollar expected move. And you could see here, if we zoom into that, it's it's cracking down through these levels. And you could it's very similar price action, lower high, lower high, lower high, as the bulls were trying to hold up in this area. So maybe this is just an undercut, and we get a little bit of a rally. But overall, the financial sector just it just doesn't look healthy um, at this particular point in time. Um, Wells Fargo is going to be a big one to watch too, pricing in a dollar point seven two expected move. So what does that bring us to? Just above forty and just around thirty seven on the low end. And you can see here also the MACD's curling over. We had a you know distribution type day, right? Even though that we bounced and we closed at the high with some good volume, it still was down almost a percentage point. So we'll see here if it can tag the upper edge or the lower expected move. To be quite honest, what I'm thinking is if we do get up into these realms up here, up to the upper expected moves, given the context of the chart, they could make good short opportunities, at least from an RVR perspective, risk versus reward, where you just have a stop above that 50-day moving average if you applied that. We'll see if it does bounce, um, but overall earnings so far have not been that good um, if you were watching the earnings with JPM. Citigroup, 1.61 expected move for the earnings session. You can see a new 52 week low there. That's not good. Strong stocks get stronger. Weak stocks typically get weaker. Um, if we zoom in, you can see put in a hammer candle is down almost 3% on the day with some big volume. And you can see very similar situation. We have, you know, this bull camp right over here. It's hanging as support, but we've been, the bear has been progressively getting closer and closer to that line. And we, we broke it today. So is this just going to be a fake out um, bull trap? Uh, or sorry, bear trap, where it traps the bears up in here. Um, well, we'll find out, but the expected move could potentially come uh, to around 46 on the high end. And even if that was the case, that looks to me just like a back test and a possible good short opportunity there too. These financials, once again, look pretty weak. We have USB, uh, US Bank Corp uh, reporting earnings. It's plus or minus a 1.45 expected move and you can see here very same situation breaking down and then we have also not in the financial sector but the healthcare sector a big one unh united health is reporting earnings it's plus or minus 15 dollar move um so that puts us to just under 520 between 515 and 520 into the low end 485 all right so quite a bit of stuff there quite a bit of data but those are the ranges to expect if the financials get hit once again well keep in mind it could be very hard like we said the market, the S&P 500 to perform, right? So financials was down there 1.91%, even though that tech was way up here, look at how, because you know tech, financials, and even consumer discretionary was flat on the day. 
it still managed to pull the S&P 500 down because financials is a heavy weight. And when we get big moves to the downside in financials, it does hold, um, hold back the S&P 500 from performing. All right, let's hop into the dollar. First and foremost, dollar close, right? A big, another big move up in the dollar, right? This parabolic move. And we're looking at UUP, which is the US dollar index bullish fund. Um, you can look up USD as well, but we're just gonna take a look at this. I wanted to point out the where we gapped above, but then we closed right on the upper weekly expected move. We have one more trading day left in the week. We'll see here if it's going to be backing off um, or if it's gonna continue to perpetuate higher. Why is that important? Let's take a look here at some correlation charts. We're gonna first and foremost look at gold and then we're gonna move through that. Now you're gonna see correlations down here and it's gonna start from short term, 15 trading days. Then it's gonna go down to longer term to six months or you know, 180 trading days. So it goes 15, 30, 90, 120, 180, and that's gonna be on the uh, remaining charts that we go through too. And as you can see here, gold is a big one to pay attention to because of the correlation right now on the immediate term. So very short term, we're almost a minus one reading, okay? So a huge negative correlation. It's at minus 0.98, um, even 30 days correlations, minus 0.94, and even 90 days, minus 0.91. So this right here tells me if the dollar back off, gold can potentially bounce to the upside. So as long as the dollar or this correlation breaks, you got to understand as the dollar perpetuates higher, gold can become a good, a good positioning if the dollar starts backing off. And as we've already stated, the dollar has been on this parabolic rise. There's going to come a point where it does back off. And that's when we need to be prepared um, for potential play in gold or gold miners. I mean, if we take a look at the S&P 500 right here, and we're gonna look at the correlation, same thing to um, the dollar, okay? Short term, there's a not really much of a negative correlation. It's rather flat here. So there's not much of a correlation going. However, as we've pointed out in the past, um, the dollar has had a strong negative correlation on the longer time frame. So 90, 120, and 180, you can see it's minus 8.9 minus eight, four, minus eight, five. So in the, the, the more shorter term, right, we have somewhat of a negative correlation. So if the dollar starts backing off, right, is this going to help perpetuate the S&P 500 up? Well, there's not really a strong correlation at this particular point in time in the short term, but we do know that the rate at which the dollar moves has applied pressure in the past to the S&P 500. If we take a look at crude oil, also a pretty strong negative correlation in the short term, minus 0.83 and minus 0.8. So not as strong as gold, but you can see here, if the dollar backs off, that might re lend relief to a potential rally in the price of oil, okay? Um, in the short term, 15 trading day to 30 trading days until that correlation breaks. Um, CRB index, okay? We're looking at CRB. This is the basket of commodities, which also includes, you know, energy. In the shorter term, minus 0.88 and minus 0.85. So 15 day, 30 day correlation is fairly strong. So the dollar is continuing to perpetuate higher. That is bringing down commodities, commodity baskets. So if the dollar does start to back off, we can very well see some relief in commodities. And that's what we need to pay attention to as the dollar is getting pretty overextended for the most part. Okay, so that is um, just some interesting correlations from a shorter term to longer term perspective that I want everyone to be aware of because the dollar is incredibly important during this time. Let's hop into the index products. We're gonna map out the expected moves where we are. Well, first and foremost, we did break down from this contraction type pattern. We can redraw out a million different ways. Big thing here is that we're below the 20 period moving average. And guess what? We're just riding on the lower weekly expected move. You can see here on the shorter term, we're still below a, a five day declining moving average. So we are still short term bearish. 68% of the time we close within these expected moves for the week. But you know, it's, it's hard to say right now. Um, we'll, we'll zoom in and show you what tomorrow's expected move is. Okay, um, but as it stands in this current moment, when you just take a look to the left of the screen, we've been just going sideways, you know, chopping around. We have option expiration tomorrow. We have some data drops tomorrow. And you can see when we get below this area, below 380, just look at the price action. It's so like squiggly, like a little worm. It just shoots up, it shoots up, you know, and it just kind of dabbles around. This area is pretty important. So we'll see if we can come back within it, but just be mindful that we are still below a five day moving average, which is now starting to decline. Now, what is tomorrow pricing in? Tomorrow's pricing in actually a higher low and a higher high. 
Okay, that doesn't mean that you know it's going to be this, but tomorrow's price range, um, given the earnings, given everything going on for the S&P 500 is around $4. So look on the low end for 373 in the high end 382. If we close within here, this area, right? This is inside the weekly expected move and then below tomorrow's expected move. So right here could be potential where we where we might be heading if you know something bad doesn't happen with earnings where it really takes us down. Um, but keep in mind, even if we start moving up into this area, we have a declining five-day moving average, and it's likely that we can finish right back, you know, where we started, right? Right? It's just doodling around that weekly expected move. If we start breaking down further from these levels, keep in mind, like more selling can go into selling, right? We, we, you, you'll, you'll get, you know, uh, market makers, hedge funds, they'll start to hedge, hedge out what's taking place in the markets, and and it could just, it could get downright wicked as far as um, volatility's perspective goes. If you take a look at the Qs, Qs are still within this contraction pattern. Look at where we are, doodling around the lower weekly expected move. You can see sharp decline out of the gates, but we rip right back up into that expected move. But overall, still below that declining five-day moving average there for the Qs. What are we pricing in for tomorrow? We're pricing in a higher high and a higher low going into tomorrow. Um, as far as the range goes, doesn't mean that that's going to happen, but be mindful that that is what is pricing in. So we can potentially go up to 291 for the high end and then around 282 for the low end. So if price comes down here, hey, maybe that's a short-term opportunity. Like if it's earlier in the day and you just wanna buy you know, a call option or something like that. And you're like, okay, I'll play it for the day. And by, by, by what I mean here is like, you don't go crazy, right? This is just, you know, you find a maybe a short dated call option or even long dated, whatever, and potentially it can swing back up here and then you close out the position. Uh, very short term or, you know, you just wait it out, right? If it comes up to the high end, this could be a potential good area to short, but just be mindful that we do have a declining five-day moving average. You are playing in the chop zone right now, so you gotta be tactical. You gotta think ahead of time, not just walk into, obviously, um, this market blindfolded. All right, let's take a look at the IWM, still within its contraction pattern. As you can see, we got outside of the weekly expected move, but guess what? We came right back up to it, very similar to the other index products. We have a MACD that's curling over which could be bearish right and we're below zero we have an rs line that is kind of petering out and an rsi that's still below 50. meanwhile we're still putting in lower highs and lower lows as time has been progressing if we take a look at the 15 minute time frame you can see here how we gapped outside of it doodled around and then we finally try to come up and fill that gap today's gap down um, but we close right around the lower weekly expected move and you can see as if we come back up here we're still below that declining five-day moving average so be on lookout for potential tag of that which it could provide um, some resistance okay so still short-term bearish bias as far as the expected move goes for tomorrow it is pricing in you know, a higher high, but then also a lower low. So quite a wide range. If we close within this area, right, that would be below tomorrow's expected move, but above the weekly lower expected move. And if we start getting up into that area, there's that five day declining moving average. So, you know, it's highly likely that we close around these weekly expected moves if all goes well, right, with earnings. And if earnings are poor, you know, just like today, man, I mean, maybe we get a gap down to these levels and rip up higher. Like it's very similar. We gap down, we moved up higher, we gap down, we moved moved right back up higher. We've been seeing some wild price action, so you gotta be tactical. And as it stands right now, there's more of a bearish tilt until that changes. Um, you know, which would mean, which would inquire the fifth, the five day moving average start to turn back up and price to start to hold above it. Um, let's hop into a couple of indicators and then we're gonna get into crypto. So indicators, uh, summation index, I really want to quickly say that this is starting to kind of curl back over. Parabolic star is still below it, but it does look like it's a possibility here. If something doesn't change fast, that will start upticking, which could indicate a further move downtrend to the, uh, the downside. So we'll continue to monitor that one. A couple other kind of you know, warning signs here. This we like to use for kind of a forward looking uh, indicator of potential volatility to come or subside. And, you know, it's been working well, but, you know, there's always a possibility where it stops working. But I wanted to call out here that the rate of change between these two assets, if it gets up to around 1.3, that's highlighted in red, each red line, it has indicated pops and in volatility ahead of time. So boom, 
you know, and it's been pretty accurate so far. So the rate of change is starting to spike up. Doesn't mean it's going to get there, but if it does, hey, that could tell us, you know, uh, an indication that we might be seeing volatility in the near future. So we'll continue to monitor that. Another little bit of a flashing sign here was today the trend indicator hit down in this uh, uh, lower lower edge reading, which when we typically get down to these levels, the 10 period trend on the hourly time frame, we've seen weakness. And the weakness that I'm explaining here is um, on the red, the red lines going down. So this one, I don't know why it's tilted over to the left a little bit, but basically right here where we fell down, we fell down, we fell down, fell down, moved up higher, then we fell down further, fell down, and then we just tagged this area again, which could indicate that we might see potential downside here coming into tomorrow. So just be aware of that. Um, it could change really quickly, right? We've been shocking back and forth, but that is something to just obviously be aware of that we did hit that level. Let's hop into crypto really quick on a good note. <laughs> Crypto market, right? The settler to shift tool is turning up, right? B gold really is getting weaker. Bitcoin's relatively flat. The rate of change is moving up. But we're also seeing crypto assets start to perform a little bit, crypto, crypto equities. And then also the price of Bitcoin goes up, right? Go figure. Um, this does not mean it's a buy signal as of right now. Uh, so what would indicate a potential buy signal? Well, it has to close up here on Sunday um, when the new candle forms. And then we need to have Bitcoin take out the, the prior week's high. If that's the case, then the buy signal is activated. The last couple of buy signals we had in this bear market have been whipsaws. Um, so, you know, proceed with caution, right? Um, I, I know some people that like to front run this. I, I don't. Um, but overall, We've been just kind of tracking sideways, and now we're starting to see somewhat of a somewhat of a turn up here. But it's it's just really too early to tell um, what this might turn into. If we take a look at Bitcoin, you can see it's just you know it's in a bearish trend, and it's in a compression pattern right now. So it expanded. Now we're just contracting back and forth right now. Um, could we come up a little bit higher, twenty two thousand? Well, we've been just doodling around twenty thousand. So a break below could indicate some more sell side activity. Even the relative strength line between Bitcoin and S and P five hundred has been, you know, really below um, below it since April. So we need to see that uptick too to feel a little bit more confident. And if you take a look at Ethereum, same situation, same story, different different asset, right? below the relative strength line and we're just chopping back and forth in this pattern if we start getting above this level hey, maybe that can help us into you know potential pop up to around 1750 this prior area of support and then we'll see what it plays out to from that point as it stands right now we just got to be um, very aware of you know volatility of the risks involved right volatility still remains elevated uh, nasdaq vol um, russell vol it's above 30 um, the vix it's around flowing around 26 right now so be aware of all of that everybody um hope today's episode helped out and that's all i got for you i'll see you back here on the next